I've shared with you in the past the implications of the thumbnail, that it's not so much how much you make as it is how much you keep, and then beyond that, it's how much you pass on. And these are all things you need to be educated on if you're going to accumulate wealth. Uh, you need to recognize there are opportunities within our tax laws, and our tax laws have been made and directed by very wealthy people so that they get to keep their wealth and get to keep more of what they make. And you need to be in a position to take advantage of that. This was driven home to me uh, from an email that I received from Rodney. Uh, I want to share with you, I asked Rodney, um, tell me a little bit more about yourself and what your situation is, and I'll see if I can help you. Now, the reality is I couldn't help him because I'm not a licensed financial advisor, but I was able to put him in contact with a financial advisor who is licensed in the state that he, he lives in, and so we, we helped him. But I think it's important for you because you're going to be able to relate to some of this. You may not be in as, as dire a position as Rodney, and you won't think it's dire when we're done. Rodney writes me and tells me he's 49 years old. He has three children, um, and his oldest, his son, uh, works for him in his business. He owns a chicken business. Uh, from what I understand, he basically um, raises hens, chickens. And then he delivers those hens to chicken farms who raise chickens or produce eggs. So he's the originator. He's the birth canal of the chicken business in a number of states. Um, he's, he calls himself the chicken mafia. Here's the question, he says. Uh, we have nine three-quarter ton trucks uh, do we own them personally, or do we need to put them in an LLC? What about the trailers? Uh, what about the, the, the transport coops? I uh, own my home. I only owe $30,000 on it. Do I pay it off, or do I mortgage it? What do I do with it? How do I handle it? My wife has a 401k with her current employer. Do we leave it alone, or do we convert it into an IRA or something? Um, how do I transition my son and possibly my other children into the ownership of the land uh, which we own and, and we want to pass on to them? Um, I'm going to inherit another farm in another state. My dad's 75. How do I transition his estate into my estate? Um what do, what do I do with the $10,000 to $15,000 profit that I'm making every week? <laughs> Rodney has a bit of a problem there. Do I purchase equipment or other necessities? Do I lease them? Um, but I, I, how, how do I write them off? And uh, I do 1099 my son. Is that the right way to be doing it? Or are, are there other opportunities for me there? There are. Um, how do I pay my drivers? Uh, how do I need to pay my, my help? Um, how much can I give to my children without paying taxes? This is one of my businesses. I also own cows in Mississippi. We transport hogs. We have interest in a small farm in uh, Little Rock. Um, then a very important sentence. I was totally bankrupt in 2007 and uh, 2008. He owes nothing to the IRS. He had told me that um, he, he fell into this in that in back in 2009, some of the chicken farms owned by Tyson um, were going bankrupt. And he went in and bought them for 25 cents on the dollar. So... Rodney is an ambitious individual. He's a, obviously a hard worker, but he shares with me that he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to move forward. So what I guess I'm saying here is this falls into, yeah, he's making enough money, but how is he going to 
position that money in order to make the most out of it. Uh, if he gives it to a financial planning firm, there's a good chance they're going to dumb it down and just put it into mutual funds or ETFs and spread it all over all kinds of different branches. And God help him if he puts it into oil. Um, and then, and but he needs to pay attention. He needs to pay attention, like I tell you, read books understand the world you live in, and then pay attention to the stock markets. It's pretty obvious technology's doing well now. It's also pretty obvious that oil is not going to do well in the future. So you want to move away from it. You want to see which of the sectors of the investments are going to do well over the next five, 10 years. How do you know that? You read. You understand the world that you live in. You educate yourself. Once you start educating yourself, you gain an advantage over all other investors. How much do you get to keep? That depends on how you own your assets. We've talked in the past about qualified assets and non-qualified assets. Qualified assets are IRAs, Roth IRAs, SEPs, 401ks, qualified for special tax treatment. So how you own them, and you need to own some of all of them because each of them have different advantages. We at Best of Us Investors have a discord. And at that discord, uh, Gabe is, has been teaching some classes, some seminars on what it, specifically what are the difference between the different kind of qualified assets. He also is t teaching a class on options trading. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, our Discord is through bestofusinvestors.com. Go there, sign up for my morning letter. It's a free morning letter. Everything here is free. We're, we're not out here to take advantage of you. Sign up for the letter. In the letter, you'll see a link to the Discord. I call it, since we're a tribe, I call it our village. It's where other investors get together and exchange ideas. Gabe has volunteered to share his knowledge free of charge so that you can learn what a qualified asset is, what fits you best, how to trade options, things of that nature. That's what it's all about. Now, going back to Rodney, there's, there's something that struck me. It, he, he asked about a business structure. This is so important. Have you read that Amazon.com Amazon has yet to pay any corporate taxes. Well, how in the hell does that happen? Because they lose money. They lost, particularly, they lost money for the first 14 years of operation. Under a corporate structure, a corporate tax structure, you get to carry your losses forward. Carry them forward and write them off against your future gains. This is kind of like what Donald Trump did, and hooray for Donald Trump. He bankrupted his casino in Atlantic City, and that's why he doesn't want to show you his tax returns, and then he's carried that loss forward against future earnings. Now, I'll ask you this. I'm sure maybe you've had some years as an individual where you had suffered losses, and meaning that you had more debt at the end of the year than you start at the year? Well, that's a loss. As an individual, did you get to carry that loss forward to the next year when you made more money? No, no, you did not. But if you had set that up in a LLC and you had that loss, you could have carried it forward. So how you own your assets determines how much you get to keep. Is that Hard to understand. So basically what you have to do is get a side gig. Remember, I talk a lot about a side gig. Get a side gig that generates income into a bank account, a business bank account that you can set up as an LLC, a partnership, a sole proprietorship, some form of tax entity that gets the advantages that Amazon gets gets to write off losses, gets to expense their business, puts your car into your company. So your car payment becomes a, 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 a cost item to run your business. This office here takes up space in my house. 
So if I had a mortgage, which I don't, I could write off the proportionate part of this house against my income that the business makes. When I buy my printer, do I buy it? No, no, my LLC buys it. When I bought that camera, did I buy it? No, no, my LLC bought it. So that goes against my income. When you bought your printer, did you get to write it off your income? No, because you don't own your, your, your assets correctly. So you don't get to keep as much as I get to keep. Now, how do I know this? Well, I'm a I was a licensed financial advisor, and I read and I studied. I understand the corporate structure. There is a reason they create corporations. Now, let's go back to Rodney. How much does he get to keep? Rodney's doing a hell of a job. He is building a business. But how much does he get to keep? You need to know what the unified credit is. Back when I was in financial planning in 2001, the unified credit was $675,000. That means that everybody, every citizen within the United States gets to pass up to $675,000 on to their heirs. Okay? So if Nita and I had $675,000 apiece, we can both pass them on. But let me tell you the first mistake all of you have made. You own most of your assets, including your home, in joint ownership with rights of survivorship. Okay? So let's say that back in 2001, Nita and I own this million-dollar home, and we own it as joint ownership with rights of survivorship. And then on my IRA, I have a beneficiary designation, and I say, that goes to Nita when I die. What about my individual separate accounts that we own jointly? Again, we own them. Joint ownership with rights of survivorship. I die. What happens? I pass my $675,000 on to Nita. And so now she has mine and she has hers. Now she dies, and let's say this has all grown from now to somewhere around um, $2 million. How much does she get to shelter from estate taxes? Guess. My $675,000 and hers? No. No, just hers, because it was joint with rights of survivorship. So what should I have done? I should have taken my unified credit and sent it to an irrevocable trust to take care of Nita if she should need it. And it would be, have a trustee that she would have to go to, to show that she needed it. And that way she would be able, we would be able to pass my $675,000 on to our heirs as well as hers. But no, we owned it all in survive, with rights of survivorship, as you do. That must be changed. But wait, there's more. Don't worry about it. So we set up a trust. There's another reason we want to set up a trust. I die. Need is still relatively young. She's only 75 years old. She falls in love with a beautiful young man who's 57. And he just takes care of her and just lavishes her with love. Guess what? He puts right of survivorship on everything that she has. And now he inherits and my children inherit nothing. But wait, what if I had put it into an irrevocable trust? No, that 57-year-old better be good at what he does. He ain't getting none of my money. What if Nita isn't capable of managing that asset? So again, we have it in a trust so she can be help, have help and so, so she can't be taken advantage of. But this isn't a problem for Nita and I because in 2007, 2017, that's 675 that had a 55% tax above 675 was moved up to 5.4 million. Now, at in 2017, Nita and I can actually pass 
if we do it properly with a trust and all, we can pass $10.8 million onto our heirs if we own it properly. Now, okay, that might have been a problem, but it was taken care of in 2018. Think about who was president in 2018. They bumped it up to 11 million, 1.18 million with a 40% tax on anything over the 11.8. And this year it goes up to 11.48. Let's just round it off to 11.5. So this year, Need and I, if we own our assets properly, we can pass $23 million onto our heirs with no taxes. So let's go back to Rodney. I don't know what Rodney's farms and his real estate are worth. There's a good possibility the way he's gathering it, he could pit that $11.5 million dollars So he needs to structure his assets, first of all, in an LLC or maybe multiple LLCs so that he can keep more of what he makes. And then he needs to structure it in trust. He may even want to think about not an irrevocable trust because maybe he has a second marriage or or whatever. I don't know. But he may also want to think about a generation skipping trust. What does that mean? That, that, this is Joe Kennedy. This is a trust that doesn't get taxed when, and, and it, it doesn't go to my children. It skips my children and it goes to my grandchildren. By doing that, my assets live a whole nother generation before they're subject to any kind of taxes. What I'm telling you here is it matters how much you make. More importantly, it matters how much you get to keep. And for posterity's sake, it matters how much you get to pass on. Do you see a drift here? Why rich people get richer? Why rich people get wealthy? Why wealthy people get filthy rich? Because the next step in this progression of how to keep more of what you make is a charitable foundation. Just notice that every athlete who makes over a million dollars a year has a charitable foundation. Every politician that walks out of the White House. Do you know the Clintons walked out of the White House dead broke in debt? Do you know they now have a very successful charitable foundation? Why would they have that? Do they really want to give all that money away? If I'm, the one I love the most, because I know a little bit more about it than most, Tiger Wood, in his heyday, was making a buttload of money playing golf. And so Nike came to him and said, Tiger, we want you to wear the swash. We want your shoes to have the swash. We want your shirt to have the hat. And we're going to pay you $9 million a year to wear the swash. Tiger said, no, 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 no. Uh, I already make too much money. Uh, I'm already in the 50% tax bracket. Uh, Pay it to my charitable foundation. So Tiger takes this. Nike doesn't pay him. They pay it to the charitable foundation. A charitable foundation is set up so that any money comes in is not taxed. Any money that goes out is not taxed. Any money that stays there and grows and invested is not taxed. But wait, what's the hook? You must spend 10%, excuse me, you must spend 5% of your charitable trust on a charitable cause every year. Wait? If I take it, Tiger says, if I take it as a golfer, as an individual, I pay 49.6% income tax. He does live in Florida, so he doesn't have a state income tax. Or if I take it in my trust, I have to pay 5% of it to 
some charitable cause. Hmm. Which do I think I'll do? Why do you think LeBron James has a charitable trust? They all do. Why do the rich get richer? Why do the richer get wealthy? And why do the wealthy get so filthy, dirty with money? Because the laws that are made for the taxing of the wealthy are made by the wealthy. Are you beginning to get this? You're playing at a disadvantage because you're not educating yourself. You're playing in the minor leagues because you're just investing in the stock market. The real money's made in how you own the assets and how you move the money through those structures and then how you pass it on. Joe Kennedy. The, the, the names are Rockefellers. <laughs> they, they knew how. And then, this just is crazy. The unified credit, the amount each individual is allowed to pass on tax-free, and then they should be, because it's, the, the estate tax is a, a form of double taxation. In 2001, it was $675,000. In 2020, it's $11.48 million, and anything over that gets taxed at 40%. But wait! If you're married or you have a significant other, you can collectively pass on $23 million estate tax-free. So, how much you make, what you get to keep, and what you get to pass on, those are the lessons of the day.